everybody, it's Precious Pioneer and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so happy to have you. Today we're gonna have an easy, super fun recipe. Um, we're gonna make a pan or skillet pizza and it's super delicious. It is a two day recipe, so be warned. You're going to need two cups of all purpose flour, three and a quarter teaspoons of salt, one and a half teaspoons of active yeast or instant yeast, and then you're going to need some olive oil, only about a tablespoon or more as needed. To prepare this recipe, you're going to need a medium bowl, and then you're gonna just combine all of the ingredients. Something that you're also going to need is three quarter cups of lukewarm water. What I did is I pulled the water from my refrigerator and then I microwaved it just a little bit. You don't want to overheat your water or uh, your yeast won't bloom. So you just want it to be a nice warm temperature and then just combine everything into the bowl. You're going to want to use your judgment. What you're looking for is a nice sticky mass. What I realized with my dough is that it did need a little bit more water and a little bit more olive oil to get that sticky ball dough that you're looking for. So definitely use your judgment because sometimes you could accidentally not uh, level out your flour or because this recipe also has uh, the grams. I didn't weigh mine. Mine was uh, measured. And so there's recipes are a little bit different each time you make it. So definitely just use your judgment and add a little bit of olive oil if you find that it's too dry or a little bit more water. Once well combined, cover for five minutes. And then after that five minutes, uncover the bowl and wet your hand. And as though you're going to lift the dough out, instead of lifting, stretch the bottom of the dough up and cover its top. Repeat it three more times, turning the bowl 90 degrees each time. This process of the four stretches, which takes the place of kneading, is called a fold. When you're done, recover the bowl. And after five minutes, do another fold. Wait five minutes and repeat, then another five minutes and do a fourth and final fold. As you're doing these steps, you can start to see the dough really gaining its elasticity and it's looking really, really well. Once you're done with your fourth and final fold, cover the bowl and let the dough rest undisturbed for 40 minutes. Then refrigerate it for a minimum of 12 hours or up to 72 hours. It'll rise slowly as it chills, developing in flavor. This long rise will also add flexibility to your schedule. Hi guys, it's day two. The dough should be ready to make our pizza, so let's go into the kitchen. About three hours before you want to serve your pizza, prepare your pan. Pour one and a half tablespoons of olive oil into a well-seasoned cast iron skillet that's 10 inches to 11 inches in diameter across the top and 9 inches across the bottom. Honestly, you guys, I used three different types of cast irons for this recipe. I used the medium one as suggested, but then I also used the mega large one. I think it's like 12... 12 inches across maybe um that's because my family doesn't really like a super super doughy thick uh crust my dad's like a fan of the thin crust and so i attempted to kind of spread it out super super thin but it's all based on preference but the thing is though you do want a heavy dark cast iron it will help you give uh give that superb crust but if you don't have it it's fine you can use another oven safe heavy bottom skillet of a similar size um or a 10 inch round cake pan or a nine inch square pan Hand. It's just whatever you have and basically you wanted to spread the olive oil all across the bottom and use your fingers or paper towel to spread some of the oil up on the edges because it's kind of a build up sort of pizza. When you take your dough out of the bowl and transfer it to a pan, you're going to turn it once to coat both sides in the olive oil. After coating the dough in oil, press the dough to the edges of the pan, dimpling it using the tips of your fingers in the process. The dough may start to resist and shrink back 
That's okay, just cover it, let it rest for about 15 minutes, then repeat the dimpling pressing process. At this point, the dough should reach the edges of the pan. If it doesn't, give it one more 15 minutes rest before dimpling and pressing a third and final time. From here, you're gonna cover the crust and let it rise for two hours at room temperature. The fully risen dough will look soft and pillowy and will jiggle when you gently shake the pan. <laughs> While the dough was rising, I started to prepare some of the toppings that I wanted to create. Like I said, I did do three different types of pizzas for this. The first one is a tomato, basil, and garlic. The second one is more of the meat lover sort of pizza, so it has bacon, pepperoni, mushrooms, and onions. For the last pizza, I decided to keep it really plain. I just put cheese, a little bit of garlic powder, some basic herbs like oregano and basil, and red pepper flakes. When you're ready to bake the pizza, sprinkle about three quarters of mozzarella, about one cup evenly all over the crust. Cover the entire crust. No bare dough showing. This will help you get that caramelized edges that we're all looking for. Dollop small spoonfuls of sauce all over the cheese. Laying the cheese down first like this will help prevent the sauce from seeping into the crust and making it soggy. Sprinkle on the remaining mozzarella and any extra toppings that you'd like. About 30 minutes before baking, place one rack at the bottom of the oven and one toward the top, about four inches to five inches from the top of the heating element. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees. To be honest guys, I went a little bit heavy on the sauce, but look how delicious the tomato, basil, and garlic pizza looks. I went ahead and did the same process for all three pizzas. Ooh, ah, chef's kiss. So from here, you're gonna bake the pizza on the bottom rack of the oven for 18 to 20 minutes until the cheese is bubbling in the bottom and the edges of the crust are rich golden brown. You can use a spatula to check the bottom. If the bottom is brown and the top seems pale, transfer the pizza to the top rack and bake for an extra two to four minutes longer. On the other hand, if the top seems fine but the bottom's not brown to your liking, leave the pizza on the bottom rack for another two to four minutes Home ovens can vary depending on, you know, different variables and stuff like that, so use visual cues to your own preferences to see and gauge what you like. Do you guys hear that sizzle? It turned out so delicious. I'm sorry I don't have much footage after this moment because we ate it so quickly, but it was absolutely delicious. Thank you guys so much for watching my recipe video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel, but have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye! Thank you.